So if we look at ourselves, how do we recognize that we're causing friction on others? And what can we do to remove the friction that we may be causing on others? Ooh, I like that. So so this, this is this notion, and this is true for all other kinds of organizational change too, is that if you just point fingers at other people and say, I'm not the problem you are, it doesn't work because 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 what happens is it becomes an orphan problem and, and 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 it's all about blame and yes and like I'm I'm as happy to do recreational bitching as much as the next person but when the stuff actually gets fixed it's when everybody takes it upon themselves to fix it so what one of the examples uh, that we have in the book and we've been in touch with the this doctor there's a doctor named Melinda Ashton. Uh, she's at Hawaii Pacific. It's the largest healthcare system in Hawaii, and we all know. I don't know about in Colombia, but in the in much of the rest of the world, when you go to the doctor, instead of looking you in the eye, they just look at the screen of the, the electronic health records. We probably all had this experience, and and so that's the electronic health rec- records add a lot of friction to the healthcare experience. But rather than saying, oh, we have to throw the whole things out, out what she did was she ran a, a sort of a, a change effort called Getting Rid of Stupid Stuff. That, and this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, Getting Rid of Stupid Stuff. And she had everybody go through who was part of the system and make suggestions about ways they could subtract sources of unneeded friction. And usually that was steps. So just for example, they they got rid of uh, one of the steps that uh, every nurse and nurse assistant was required to uh, make when they did rounds, and that got rid of 24 seconds for each visit. And this ended up being like something like 1,000 hours a month in the whole system. And to me, that's a pretty good model of rather than just complaining about it and pointing fingers, we all worked together to find the the problems, and then there was a group who had the power to implement the solutions. And and that's the opposite of it's a simple example, but that's the opposite of teaching it, of treating it as an orphan problem. And it's also a sign that uh, gee, I, I have some stories about things that get fixed suddenly and all at once. Uh, but in real life, this is it's like a discipline. It's like go no, like exercising once doesn't seem to work. If you do it once a year, it doesn't seem to work. You get you, you got to do it as part of a discipline. Well, that brings up an interesting concept that you have in the book, which is chicken effers and hollow Easter bunnies. <laughs> can, can, can I use the word fuckers in this? Am I allowed? Absolutely. I don't, I don't, You're allowed. <laughs> so, so this comes from my friend Becky Margiot and Becky. She's t- she went she went to West Point was when she went to West Point a long time ago and she was one of the only women there. She was she's like five one and you know it, 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 and I love when I talk to Becky is it talk about friction the way she said she got through the hazing at West Point when she was a first year she said my view was that the upperclassmen who were taunting me were just really funny so I'd mostly get in trouble for laughing at them. So that's Becky. Um, anyhow, so she goes through her military service, and and and, and then she look, is looking for something to do after she's in the military is, is a captain for seven or eight years, and uh, she gets involved in the homelessness um, problem, which is very serious, of course, in the United States. Eventually, she led a campaign that found homes for 100,000 homeless um, Americans and has done all this stuff. But one of the things that she learned in the military was that when something went wrong. And, and she has a story that she kind of wakes up her commanding officer at um, three in the morning and she come, looks at Becky blearily and Becky describes the problem. And the commanding officer says, well, who's fucking this chicken? Which is apparently military speak for who is in charge of fixing this thing. And so then fast forward to the 100,000 Homes campaign that Becky and her team is trying to get people all over the country to actually find homes for homeless people because that was her definition of success. Homeless person, put them in a home, that counts as one. So, uh, And there were some folks where people would just talk and talk and talk and talk and do nothing. She called them hollow Easter bunnies. You know, the kind the of people, worst. The, the worst, the people who use talk as a substitute for action, they're bullshitters. And she started giving this little speech about who's fucking this chicken. And people love that speech. And so they st- so they gave this award to people who actually got stuff done, which was the, they and they gave him a little tin um, chicken, a rooster actually, because <laughs> that's what fucks with chicken is a rooster, right? Sure. That's my understanding of how these things work. And uh, so anyway, so so that's that's Becky, and Becky is totally a character. I mean, uh, and, not, and now she's helping other uh, large nonprofits. Uh, like the Gates Foundation, with other sorts of large scale change, but that's Becky, and and, and so and, and the lesson in sort of in without the obscenities, 
is that in in organizations that are good at fixing friction, uh, rather than using talk as a substitute for action, so the bullshit, the plans, the meetings, the speeches, the training, which is all nice and it does motivate action, but when it becomes a substitute for actually doing stuff, that's when we start having a red a red flag that we're you know just uh, spewing out nonsense and not actually getting stuff done. 